The domain for our final project is a management system for state college bars and restaurants. There will be two problems that this system will try to solve. Managing an establishment's employees, sales, and inventory, and also allowing customers to view select information about these establishments. The first problem will require a method for verifying an employee who's using the system and allowing those employees to add, modify, or delete information in their database. For the second problem, customers will require a method of verifying their status and viewing the relevant information about the establishments that they choose. Starting with the establishments system, the web application will require some form of login and credential checking to give the employee permission to use that database. After verifying, the employee is going to need to manage various parts of the establishment's information. The web application will require an interface for managing the employees themselves. The establishment will need to keep a record of their employees' personal information as well as pay information, and this must be able to be accessed by the employees of the establishment. Also, with the employees, mm -hmm. another range of information that needs to be managed by the database and accessed by users is the menu of the establishment. Items in the menu will need to be listed and have the ability to be edited in different ways for the establishment's current set of data. A user needs to be able to access the menu to add or delete items, change prices, and move an item to a different category of the menu. Finally, employees will need to use this system to have the ability to make transactions for, or for a customer who visits their establishment. This will require that the web application takes inputs such as when the transaction took place, which customer ordered, what the items were that were ordered, and if any discounts were applied. For the customer side, the web application will need to check for permissions of the user, and since they're a customer, only show the information about the establishments that is read-only. The main interest in showing data will be to choose an establishment and allow a customer to view the establishment's menu. The customer should be able to choose an establishment and see the food and drink items specifically and see information such as dish type, alcohol percentage, and time of day that items are served they would like to see. Finally, should be able to view the events that are occurring at an establishment. The web application should give the user the ability to view different kinds of events occurring at the different establishments. Here's our data model for our project. I will be going over all the tables in the data model and their relationships. I will then also be going over the indexes um, and how to speed up our queries. First, I'll we'll start with the establishments table. This is like the main focus of our project, going over different establishments and their info. So the establishment table has the establishment ID, which is the primary key, has the name, has the type, which it would be like a restaurant or a bar, has their street address, their zip code, and their phone number. The establishments table has mainly just like an establishment's personal info. Next, there are events linked to each establishment. There are, is a many, many, many to many relationship here. So each event has an event ID, which is the primary key, an establishment ID, which is linking that event to a certain establishment, a day of the event and what type of event, such as like a band or trivia. So there can be many events at one establishment and there also could be one type of establishment or one type of event at many establishments. Next, we'll go over the employees. This is a many to one relationship. There can be many employees at one establishment, but only one employee can only work at one establishment. So it has a user ID, which is the primary key, their first name, their last name, their phone number for their personal info, the establishment ID linking them to where they work, and their status ID. Status ID links to the status table. This is a one to many. You can have uh, many people with the same status, but one person only has a single status. So the status table has a status ID with the primary key. Those link to the name of the status. This could be like a manager, a bartender, waiter, waitress, or a bouncer. And then each status also has a wage associated with it.
Next, I'll go to the menus table. Each establishment will have a menu. This will be all their food and drinks. So the menus table has the establishment ID for which, you know, which what menu this establishment is for, and then also an item ID. Both of these are the primary keys. So the items table is a list of all the food and drinks that these establishments have. So the items table has the item ID, which is the primary key, the name, which, which is just the name of the food or drink, which could be like spaghetti, um, steak, like a name of a beer or a soda. The dish type, this will be like the ethnicity, could be like American, Italian, or Chinese. The price of the item, the meal time, which would be like breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and the alcohol percent. So if it's a drink and it's not alcoholic, it just has 0%. Otherwise, it just has the actual alcohol percent of the drink. The size would be like the size in ounces, and then the type, which is just food or drink. So the menus and the items table has a many to many relationship. The, the menu will then link the establishment and the item, and you can pull from the menus table a certain establishment ID and it'll give you a menu of the whole restaurant. Next is the transactions. This is a transaction log for each establishment. So it has the transaction ID as the primary key. The user ID is the primary key. It links to a certain establishment. It has a coupon ID, which we'll go over that table later. Um, so you can get like discounts on your purchases an item ID, so what item they are purchasing, how many, the quantity of that item, and what day it was purchased on. So each item rings up separately in this transaction. So if a person ordered a steak and a beer, there will be two separate transactions for that, one for the steak, one for the beer. Next is the users table. So this users table is for the login but it's also linked one-to-one -to, -one to both the employees and the customers. So the users table has the user ID, the username, password, and permission. So this is what um, users will use to log into our site. So they will sign in with their you know, username and password. And then depending if their user ID is in the employee table, they will be sent to the employees version of the site. And if their user ID is in the customer's table, they will be sent to the customer's version of the site. So going over the customer's too, the customer's table has a user ID as the primary key, their first name, last name, and phone number for their personal info. This is also linked to the transaction table, uh, many to one. So a customer can have many transactions, but a transaction only has one customer associated with. And then lastly is the coupons table. The coupons have a coupon ID as a primary key, the type four. So this could be like um, how the coupon can be used. Like I think we have, we have um, coupons can be used for on American dishes only and get a certain percent off. And then it has the discount, which is, you know, how much is being taken off the transaction and the expiration date. So they can only be used up to a certain date and what establishment they can be used at with the establishment ID. That also has a many to one relationship with the transactions. So a coupon can be used only on one transaction, but a transaction can have many coupons. Also a um, many to one relationship for transactions and items. Um, one, only one item per transaction but transactions can have many items. Now I will be going over all of the indexes used in our data model. So the first index you'll be using is on the price column in the items table. Um, this will have an easy way of just sort through prices of like items. So say we're looking for items only um, $5 or more. Uh, this will be great and it'll be, we'll be using a uh, B-tree index. So that way we can sort through ranges. We're not gonna be looking for a specific price most of the time. So a B-tree index will give us the fastest way to sort through those items because there could be thousands of items since all the establishments are sharing the items table. 
Then we will have an index on the establishment ID inside the employees table. Um, we are doing this because there could be, you know, if we have thousands of restaurants and each restaurant has you know, around 100 employees, that's a very large amount of employees. And say we want only employees at a certain establishment, we want to be able to sort by that very quickly. So using an index on the establishment ID of the employees table will help us to find those certain employees very quickly. This would be a hash index since we'll just be searching for a specific value. We're not going to search for multiple different establishment IDs for employees. So a hash index will give us the best solution here. Then we'll use an index on the expiration date in coupon. You know, each coupon has an expiration date which they can be used. And we want to make sure that when a customer is using a coupon that the expiration date is still valid. So we will use a hash index here because we'll be looking at a comparison of the current date with the expiration date. So we'll be searching for a certain date and making sure it's less than that. So a hash index will allow us to sort through possibly thousands of coupons very quickly to find if they are still valid. And then we will also be using an index on the establishment ID of the transaction log. Um, a transaction log could have you know, millions of transactions because each establishment could have thousands of transactions each day. So if we are sort, we could sort by the establishment ID in the transaction table to allow us to find certain transactions for each establishment quicker. Um, so indexing the establishment ID will make sure that we can find what things, where the items are bought at for each establishment. And this will also be a hash index since we will be looking for a certain establishment. We won't be looking for a range of establishments. So hash index um, looking for a certain value will help us get the answer the quickest. Hello, Professor. I'm Yu Hao Zhang, and I'm going to illustrate the five table joins in our bar project and how it works. In our bar project, we provide a function that employees can create the build and, li and listed all the transaction records for specific customers doing the a transaction in a specific date. So the web page will ask the employees to insert the customer's user ID and what dates they want to search for that customers. Then the insert value will equal to the user ID and the date in the transaction tables. Then the transaction table will join with the customer tables establishment tables, coupon tables, and item tables. They are joined by the customer's user ID, establishment IDs, and the coupon IDs, and item ID. Then the selected content will be the first name and last name in customer tables, the establishment name in establishment tables, the discount value in coupon tables, the name and price in item tables, and the quantity date in transaction tables. And also doing the basic aggregation functions for the subtotals, which is the um, item price multiple, the quantity of the transactions, in the transactions and subtract the discount to get the subtotals. So each record will have one subtotals listed along with the um, transactions. Then the next function will sum all the subtotals to get the final bills for let customers in the specific date. In addition, we we made the fun, we make a if conditions to remind customer uh, remind employees to insert the valid value of user ID and date value when the selection record selected zero rows for the uh, transaction. Then the if condition will remind employees to you know 
insert the there there's no transaction exists and please insert the uh insert the correct user ID and the date to make the record and subtotal make the record and the final bill. Yeah. So let that are the five table joints in our project. Thank you. Hello, this is Hamming Wong speaking. In this video, I'm going to introduce the registration page and talk about how we handle the possible errors by looking at the source code of this page. This is the registration page. A user may type in the username and password here and here, and then click on the register button. An alert box will pop up on success, and the user will be redirected to the customer homepage. If the username is already taken, and uh, the page will not redirect, but instead show the error message of username already exists. The implementation of the registration is simple. The code first connects to the database and then tries to insert the username and hashed passwords into the user table. This will usually succeed. However, if a duplicate username is to be inserted, the execution will fail due to the unique constraint of the, use, uh, of the username column. Uh, in this case, the execute function will return, <coughs> uh, will return false and then set the error info. Uh, one of the elements of the error info is an error code. After checking documentation and experimenting on the server, I figured out that code 23000 means duplicated unique column values. Error handling in the other parts of this project are similar. We first check the return value of the execute functions and then we take actions according to uh, the arrow <coughs> the uh, the arrow uh, the arrow codes. Hello, this is Alexander Rang recording his part of the video. When you log into our app on our server, you'll be greeted with this login page. So you can attempt to log in with gibberish and a gibberish password, and you'll find the username does not exist. You can attempt to log in with a correct user with the wrong password, and you'll get wrong password. If you successfully log in, and the password in this case is empty for convenience sake, you get the success icon, and then you'll be greeted with the next customer homepage. Because this user was a customer, they get sent to the customer homepage. If the user was an employee, they get sent to the employee page. If an employee attempts to log in, they will be taken to the employee homepage. If a new person tries to create an account, they will be prompted with this page, so they can attempt to use this pass, this username and this password, except that username already exists. So they, they will have to create a new username, such as Alex Rang 8 Then a real password, they hit register, and you're successfully logged in. Every registration is assumed to be a customer until a manager employee moves them from a customer to an employee. First, we will try out the employees page. When you load in, you can see their user ID, first name, last name, phone number, and their status. Status represents the position they hold within the establishment. In each of them, you can delete and update. So, let's update Roanna Godson. Maybe I misspelled her name. And she's changing from a position 3 to a position 2. You hit save. You wait a few seconds. Back here. Her name is spelled correctly, and she's back to the correct status. Unfortunately, Roanna has to be laid off, so we're going to fire her. And the same thing will happen, we'll be redirected, and now she's gone. If you scroll down here, you have a new employee section, so you could add in a user ID, such as 1166, first name, Gavin Cording, phone number is 157-953-4617, and she, or he, is a status of 1. So you add that, 
wait for it to be redirected, then he's added down here at the bottom of our list. The next page we'll go to is the events page. Works very similarly to the employees page. You get here and you can update or delete any of these events and you can even add a new event at the bottom. So let's start with an update. Say trivia actually got changed to country night. And then that night got changed to uh, Friday. Do you click save? Wait three seconds to get redirected. And now it is updated. So it is a bartending show and country night at the same time. But, well, the bartending show is going to interfere a little bit. So let's add, let's actually delete it. So, get redirected. And now it's removed from the database. Say on Monday, they decide, okay, we're going to do a bachelor night. Bachelor night. You add that. Wait for it to redirect. And now Bachelor Night is scheduled for Monday. The next page we'll go to is the Transactions page. When we load into here, we can see the current list of all transactions that have occurred on our table. The Transactions table and the Customer Bill represent our five-table join, combining customers, establishments, coupons, items, menus, and transactions. So you can see where somebody bought something from, if they used a coupon, who bought it, what they bought, and how many they bought, and of course, when they bought it. So we can start by inserting a new transaction, 1251, establishment ID 10, coupon ID 5, item ID 8, and they bought three of those on last year's Boxing Day. Hit save, we get redirected. And it's in here. You added it. Next, we will look at editing. So you can go here and you can click on a transaction and say the item they actually bought when somebody comes back and complains was not item 12, but it was item 11. So you hit save and then you wait to get redirected. And now it's good. Okay. Next, we can delete a transaction. So maybe there was a refund or something going on with the credit card. You can delete it. And now we will be redirected. And now it's gone. The last thing you can create is a customer bill. This will allow you to see what a particular customer bought on a particular day. So all you need to do is click this button. You get the user ID. And then you choose the date, 2019 11 25, one month before Christmas, hit create, and it seems that Sammy Alston bought ribs and apple pie and got good discounts on both of them. He bought 11 racks of ribs and 10 apple pies, leading them to a total bill of $512. Mm -mm. The next page we'll go to is the menu page. This page shows you all the food and drink available at a particular establishment. So if you want to add new food, such as spaghetti, which is Italian, for $12 at dinner, you can add it, wait to be redirected, and there it is. If you accidentally put the wrong price in, you can update it on the fly, make it $11, hit update, wait to get redirected, and there it is, at $11. If it doesn't sell well, you can delete it. Wait another three seconds, and it is deleted. All of the food, update, delete, and add functions work exactly the same in the drinks section. The final page that an employee can go to is the coupons page. You click on that button and you see the available coupons, which you can see which ones have previously expired and ones that have not expired yet. On the customer side, you can only see the ones that have not expired. So you can add a new one, type, so you can say it is for Italian food. You get a 10% discount and you have an expiration date of 2021-131. Hit add. You wait to get redirected. And there it shows up.